Today our guest is the doctor of philosophy Ayrlar Mehmetov. Today we will discuss refusal of Sovietism. In 1991, Azerbaijan declared independence, uh, namely it refused Sovietism. 19 years have passed. What did Azerbaijan achieve in the movement of refusal of Sovietism? I think uh, refusal of Sovietism was announced in Azerbaijan, but uh, there is no staff to carry out this movement. You know, refusal of Sovietism should have been a natural process, and this process should end, should have ended in the refusal of Sovietism. But uh, refusal of Sovietism in Azerbaijan was announced by a decision. Maybe uh, the, that's why uh, the refusal of Sovietism didn't intervene into society, couldn't be consolidated in the society. And the question is whether uh, there is a will and people to carry out this uh, movement of the refusal of Sovietism. You know, uh, the representatives of uh, former Soviet parties are in power in Azerbaijan and they rule the country with uh, former rules, old rules. Therefore, uh, they don't trigger the refusal of Sovietism, uh, but on the contrary, they prevent it. But let's admit that this process uh, developed much more quickly in 1992 when the Azerbaijan Popular Front uh, movement came to power, uh, and this process became caretaker and the, it returned the people to old ideology. You know, a reaction is dependent on the previous action. For example, in the media you see that one side uh, voices a strong anti thesis and then the other side uh, voices a stronger anti thesis a much more severe anti thesis The argument, the controversy becomes intensified and the parties, the sides become polarized. The reaction is slavery, it is dependence on the previous action. Here you do the opposite of what your opponent does. The idea here is that everything should be the opposite of the Soviet Union. For example, if the Soviet Union prevented enhancement of religion, today religion should be enhanced uh, on contrary to Soviet Union. It is wrong. Soviet period uh, might have both uh, positive and negative features. Namely, the beginning should not be reactionary, but independent. In the Soviet period, uh, there was uh, just a communist party. But today, after 19 years, we have uh, multiple parties. What are the changes? How did the people benefit from this? Multi-party system doesn't mean anything in itself. If we uh, look at the opposition parties, opposition parties will see that there are not a differentiation in their thoughts, in their charters, in their minds. They are not different from each other. The society didn't undergo a differentiation process. There are no new voices in the society. In Azerbaijan, society is only divided into opposition and authority. But there should be a diversification. You may pay way for establishment of a lot of parties, but if they don't have creativity, new ideas, new initiatives, uh, it will have no result. You said that it's a long process. Uh, under which ideology today's uh, youth are brought up? Uh, will they be able uh, to, be, uh, to enter parliament uh, in the future? Today most of the parliamentary candidates are the uh, former communists. And also, the number of years in executive administrations is very little. And uh, in this case, how long can this process last? How do you see the future of today's youth? Today, the youth don't feel the support of uh, state. They are only backed by their uh, parents. Today, uh, that's why there is not a sharp generation gap between uh, fathers, parents, and their uh, children. If the youth and the authorities is interested uh, in establishment of a uh, huge army of uh, poor youth, because if uh, the youth have uh, material financial independence, uh, then they will would be able to study abroad or buy uh, multiple books, journals, magazines. Today the youth uh, cannot have independent ideology, they are only attracted by uh, religion and national mentality. You mentioned the religion. What is the ideological difference between the uh, communist and atheist youth and today's youth? Today's youth uh, fear God, but communist uh, youth had a different ideology. One of the uh, positive features of uh, the 
solid period is the, that the religion was maintained at a household level. But today the process of the process of re-Islamization uh, has kicked off. Even really religious followers are invited to the debates as if they have position to. The Soviet youth, the communist youth could uh, give their life for their ideals. But today's youth, uh, today our heroes could lose their life for, for religious aims. And uh, the heroes of Soviet period uh, could lose their lives for uh, selling Lenin. And when uh, they mentioned na the notion of motherland, they meant they implied Soviet Union. And who is today's hero? We have uh, war heroes. And for what ideology did they lose their life? For what ideology? For what aim? You know, when we usually uh, compare Rasulzada and Narimano, we usually prefer Rasulzada. But if we uh, look at, uh, if we consider from Narimano's point of view, he meant, he implied uh, unification and uh, uh, unification for ideals, principles. But if we uh, consider Rasulzada's position, uh, he meant uh, unification uh, with ethnic principles, national uh, affiliation, national principles. Therefore, we, uh, just from a uh, philosophical point of view, Narimano is preferred. Of course, we today prefer nationalism, uh, we prefer nationalist years, and globalization uh, could seem a problem for us. But uh, globalized youth is much more preferable than youth staying in their framework. Yes. Today, the process of uh, refusal of Monuments is also on the way. The Lenin's or communist monuments are, not, are have been destroyed in Azerbaijan regions, streets, cities. But what are created in, instead of them? Today now architecture we see new uh, houses, new buildings, new uh, monuments as well. Uh, how do you think? Is this replacement carried out uh, in a right or wrong way. Of course, I don't consider it right. Uh, I think uh, construction of monuments to particular leaders, even their mother, their father, uh, is very disgusting. I know they understand it or they realize it, but and they are just having fun. Uh, as to the natural side of the question, the uh, human memory is the uh, biggest obstacle to for its fr to his freedom. Uh, sometimes we want to be free, but but uh, the stereotypes, the uh, ready ways, the prepared ways led us to the same way. Sometimes we reject uh, one world outlook and uh, search another, uh, search a different outlook. But uh, it happens so that we uh, go back to the uh, our former outlook. Thank you for coming to our studio.